Babe Kim got my now. to the triumphant return of the Barracks Brigade. Tonight we're going to get political. We're going to get a lot of things, including Snuggy and Weird. So, basically we've been off for a long time. We, we fucking, oh god damn. We've been off for the holidays, the field, the coronavirus, everything, but here we are back. And so we're going to introduce around. Out. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go around the table and introduce the people, the players, the main men that are hanging out tonight. Okay. I'm Rick Valkyrie. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm David. I'm You <laughs> David? <laughs> You're gonna go with David. <laughs> David? <laughs> All right. Uh, fuck my it. Bad, my bad, Dragon. Dragon. I'm not fucking calling you Dragon. Dragon is nuts all over Oh, oh, oh got him. <laughs> got him. So Michael Michael Ryan's a cuck. <laughs> He's a dragon. No, He's a I dragon. Go, I, if anything, I go by Mike now. Mike, just Mike. straight up Mike. Mike. Yeah, my content. Michael, <laughs> Michael Ryan wants to feel cool enough. He has to go with something nah, I'm just else. Just Mike. Just straight Mike. Just Mike. He wants to be yeah, like Mike Cock. <laughs> oh my oh. god! Nah, nah, just kidding. This is my mother. I fucking love you. <laughs> Fuck you, Shorzy. All right, go so ahead. What's up, guys? It's your turn, bud. Oh, I don't know what the dog's on this thing. No, no, I'm saying like we got a we got a new <laughs> guy in the house. We, we got we got, a, we got a new boy in the house, and he's chilling. So what's your name, new boy? Shit, I was going to log in message, but log in, like like heavy logging. I'm gonna log in your mom. <laughs> Jesus fuck, this is gonna be a podcast. <laughs> this, this is how we're bringing it back. This is how we're bringing it back. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start off I mean, extra, we're extra we're heavy. Well, let's get out of the way right now. So Please. what the fuck is going on in Washington State with those fucking hippies, and Antifa, Black Lives Matter, and the extra just random right, fucking hipsters? Well, hey, bro, nothing says intimidating like an emaciated vegan with a shitty AR. To be fair, to be fair Rick, Rick, have you seen the video... Of the SoundCloud rapper Raz, who is... Oh, is he their warlord now? He is the warlord <laughs> now, yes. And have you seen the video of this dude handing out ARs? So, the, oh, let me let me backtrack a sec. No, bro, this, so watching act- this whole situation has been like, you, you know like you know, like little kids when they think they have the upper hand, but you know better, and you're like, oh, that's so cute, you think you're winning. That's what this is. You're but watching it's Chaz. Not, though. You're watching Chaz, and you're just like, "Oh, you, you communists! You're so cute. You think the, you're actually getting along, except the they're starving. They have to resort to having weapons and, and borders, they, the, and they can't. The and, they're, week, and they're keeping people from leaving. In the first like, oh, week, gee, two days in, in two days in, they ran out of food, and they had to keep people from leaving. In oh, the guess first what? Hey, week, communism, the, huh? In, it's almost as if it doesn't fucking Rick, work. In the first week, they wrote a list of demands <laughs> that they set on the outside of their border and it was basically food medical supplies and shit like that but what I, what, what, what I want to talk about is the, the SoundCloud rapper whose name is Raz supposedly there's a video of him there's a video of him handing ARs out of his trunk to random ass people to police their area did, did you the best part the, the, the cop that killed somebody which one you're gonna have to be more specific. You have to be 54 times no, more specific. Uh, lots of cop killed people. Uh, the one in Kra- Kraus or whatever it is. Talking to the microphone is good, Brandon. Kraus? Kraus? You just yeah. made that place no, up. Like, no, like, no. <laughs> like, no, that's his last name. The cop's name is Kraus. K R A U S. But where did it happen? Allison Kraus? No, Washington, whatever. Kranz? 
Chop. Chop. Chaz? Chaz. Chaz. Yeah. Chaz. Yeah. So there was, there was, there was a shooting. There was a shooting in Chaz. And by then Kraus. By, by Kraus. I don't know who Kraus is. <laughs> there was a <laughs> shooting. That was the cop. No cops Kraus. shot anybody because cops aren't allowed in that area. You saw the no, on, on the outskirts, area. dumbass. The outskirts. The outskirts, dumbass. Now remember, this gentlemen. This is why we have Roman. It's not. Toby. Just remember, Roman, Roman people with guns enforcing uh, the rules. Today. They're the not police. The cops took it over two days ago. The cops took it over two days ago. So you're saying the cops... Took over Chaz. Yes. Yes. Cops. Kraus. K R A U S E. Got shot out on the outskirts of <laughs> Chaz. Chaz. This happened two days ago. They two did, days ago. They, Roman, can you fact check? Man, we're off to. I don't know what the fuck is happening. We're off to a really good start. <laughs> hey, they literally took down the the safe zone two days ago. This yeah, already, the this, it's already been ended. Ended. The AZ got taken down. The two EO days was taken down. You know what AZ stands for? <laughs> area, Arizona. Uh, Arizona? Autonomous zone. Area zone. Yes, zone. exactly. Yeah. They it just, was taken over two days ago. So everyone, they took down that shit. Mike yeah. So I, I'm talking about shit that's a Roman. You got taken down two days ago. Okay, my mistake if Chaz William, or William Shop out. has gotten taken down two days ago. I'll go ahead and drop this because I don't have anyone to fact check because we're not so a real wait, podcast. So wait, let, let me get this straight. You mean to tell me that a bunch of emaciated, vegan, socialist pussies couldn't make an autonomous zone work? That blows my mind. There's no fucking way. No fucking way. It's almost yeah, as if it's almost as if collectivism just doesn't it. work. Like, well, it actually it's is weird. Did they really take down the zone? Yeah, they, they took down the zone. They took down the zone. And it's the outskirts of crowds. They took right? down the zone. <laughs> so Chaz is no more. Yes. Like, That's they crowds. took the outskirts. No shit. Because they, they shot they, a cop they, and killed him. The the I don't understand, though. They like, shot they, and killed the cop. Take, yes. So just because they killed the cop. Did they take down the full... Like, Wait, did they, they, yeah, they, they had SWAT. Yeah, yeah, they they the AZ came, came in. in. Like, no shit. Right. They took right. down the right. full right. area. Yes. Yes. Listen. So it's not a thing. Listen. In here. Okay, go ahead. Oh, hold on. Tell him. <laughs> All right, young Roman, young Roman on the mind. This, 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 young Roman, this, young Roman is our Jamie. Uh, He's our Jamie. He's gonna fact check all the shit. Ready to go. All right, Kraus family occupations: farmer and housewife for the top report of jobs for men. <laughs> this doesn't sound right. Okay, right. okay. That's, okay. That's, that's the wrong one. That's young the Roman, <laughs> young Roman, please, play, please take Wait, the dick out of your mouth. We're trying again. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, just look at the family being of Kraus. All right, take on, take the mic, read it again. With, uh, with, uh, with less than show to your mouth, please. We're going to have to see this. Seattle Autonomous Zone. Seattle what? Autonomous Zone. Take it away. Oh, no, we got to go. I, I wanted to have a decent conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. Oh, That's awesome, man. We're going to see this elsewhere. We need to get rid of it. <laughs> what? Rid of it? Rid, dumbass. All right. <laughs> Can you Is it fucking read? All right, so, so. Are we going to get rid of it, or are we going to get rid of it? We get rid of it, son. You know what? I'm gonna read this book real quick. <laughs> Michael Ryan, I you can't read. I think you yeah, but you can't read. Shit. You can't read anything. All right, you read fact, it on read. Fact, yeah. fact, fact check. All right, all right. Here we go. Oh, he's about to read. He's about to read. Warning. <laughs> <laughs> How about it? Finish. Oh. No. Why are you gonna put it down after two words? <laughs> what? Why is that? You said I can read. You didn't say how much. Go, go. Okay, read, <laughs> read the entire front label. Just the front label. Oh, no, I, I think you should give him a, a, oh, a sh- little expert sh- in mind sh- comp. He's <laughs> Korean. <laughs> <laughs> He's Korean. What's up, son? <laughs> this is why I don't have any friends. Hey, this is ASMR. hey, shut the fuck up. This is why your mom doesn't you fucking love you. you. Been two point six verbs. <laughs> if I had some blanks, that's right. You right, heard it here first. Michael, Michael Ryan can't read. Fucking <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a cup. Jinx, you owe me a fucking dick. Eat my ass, cuck. <laughs> I love how you get out yeah, of the, I love how you get the army and you instantly turn into like the most alt right motherfucker that I've ever Yo, met. Yo, have life. I changed? <laughs> I haven't fucking changed. I've been this way since gotten, you've met you've me. You've just gotten more bold because now you don't have the constraints of being in the military. Exactly. You can you can be more yourself. <laughs> Every sergeant can eat my fucking asshole. <laughs> Floss with my tank. Bruh. <laughs> If you heard a loud beep sound, it's because we had to cut that out. 
<laughs> Racism's loaded I would, online on YouTube. I would I would like to think I would like to think Alexander Kime! Next time! You have to cut that out now. No, I don't, because you're out of the military now. Yeah, don't fuck you. If you don't cut that out, I'll sue you and take you for every minute. (laughs) (laughs) You just gave my address to the internet. (laughs) Yeah, I'll leave leave that part (laughs) in. It'll be okay. Richard. I don't know what your middle name is. (laughs) Your middle name is probably (laughs) faggot. Can we go ahead and just square yeah, this hey, away? Um, can we, right, let's have so, a fight. Let's have a fucking fight. Like, like, like fist Physi- fight? Physical? <laughs> no. <laughs> do you, not physical. Do you mean sh- oh. shit talking? Do you mean a debate? Okay, here's the debate. The All, right. All right, Michael Ryan's about to lay down the law. Let's All go. Right, let's go. go. Let's get ready. You want to see the first round of a the duel of the minds right now. Let's do clash it. Clash of Titans. Let's go. <laughs> clash of the Titans. <laughs> A clash of the a clash of the ship bag. A clash of the ship bag titans. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Is your dog a sandwich? Shut the fuck up. Take your take your roto away. Is from you. Camp Hovey in the basement. Oh, oh god. my oh. fucking god! We are not going <laughs> to discuss yeah, this. No, no, no. We're not going to discuss this. In the fridge. Because you're wrong. No, because you're a moron. Prove me wrong. Uh, here, prove you wrong. Problem solved. Something changed. Eat my ass. What are we going to talk about here, Rick? <laughs> because Michael Ryan's lost yeah, all privileges to choose subjects. Login. I can confirm Camp Holby is a basement. You know what I can confirm? Uh, I've met hard. one Puerto Rican that I like, and it's <laughs> not you. <laughs> yeah, for the record, on the couch right now, we got three. We got three white dudes. We got three white dudes. Uh, a, a Puerto Rican, a native, oh, and Michael and Ryan. Michael Ryan insists that he's eight percent black, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure his his fucking uh, what, what's that shit called? Something in me. 23 and me. 23 and me. I'm pretty sure he's 23 and me. When it says African, it means South African. Bro, we have we on this couch right now. We have we have a Scandinavian. We have a German. We have a whatever the fuck he is. We have a Puerto Rican. We have a Native American. And then in the back here, we have a young Roman. We have a Slav. To be fair, I'm not gonna lie. I thought that the Native American was Puerto Rican. I'm not gonna lie. Which which I will say, young Roman one. Uh, second Those place in the uh, uh, slob, slobbing squat, <laughs> or, or squatting slobs and track suits competition. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rick is going to have to edit the fuck of this and ruin the whole thing. <laughs> this is a shit show already. This is worse than last night's recording. <laughs> and that's saying a lot. All I've got to say is one thing. Nothing matters. We're all accidents. And fuck you. Oh, that's speaking true. of Rick and Morty. Uh, I want to go on the record for something. Oh, oh you young Rome wants to go on the record. Camp Hovey, not a basement. <laughs> Camp Hovey, basement. You heard it here first, folks. You heard it here, folks. I'm going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been there. You can't talk shit. You can't talk shit yet. Yo, is, is Feather Boy hey. trying to talk shit? <laughs> yeah. Michael Ryan, if you're going to talk, talk into the mic, son. Talk into okay. the mic. Yeah. For all the people that never been to Camp Hovey, will know shit. Everybody. Okay. It is in the basement because facts. Because facts. <laughs> Mountain. Facts. You can't see my hands. Mount left. Mount right. Hovey. Basement. <laughs> no fucking fucking straight up. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Show me it's not in the basement. I don't care okay, whether he's right or not. not I just want Rick uh, to do some editing. Show, show me it's not in the basement. Bro, I'm, I'm, okay, wait till you fall asleep. Show, okay. <coughs> show me, show me. Wait until, wait until you fall asleep later tonight, okay? Oh, yeah, I'm going to your enter ass. your room, you mean and then you I'm going to enter you. We're going to show you, know you what funny? a basement really I is. I sleep with a gun next to my bed. You'll get shot in your dick. Oh, don't worry. You can't grab your gun when your hands are tied behind your bag. You think so? You think you'll be that quick? Oh, yeah. I'm strong. I'm stronger than you. Yes, I know you're stronger than me. That's why I have guns. <laughs> That's why I will I will be stealthy, sneaky, and all quiet. Like. You're not quiet enough to beat my guns. <laughs> I don't believe you, Rick. Stay out of my room. Yeah, and my and my pregnant wife will kill you. Hey, I would not hurt Bailey in a million years. Bailey, Bailey, much love. 
All right, well, I will do it without waking you up, Bailey, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, hey, this is a uh, Lundy Jack. <laughs> this is the Puerto Rican Punisher coming on. Right this is Puerto Rican Punisher. Uh, Mike, check. Uh, Yo, my name is Jenna Tawartz. <laughs> Alright, we're going. You can't take my fucking... Yo, that was a pretty good game attack. Yeah, I know it is. There's something you can't read, that was a good attack. Okay, there was one in the fridge. Like on the upper the left side. Dude, can, bottom we, shelf dude, can we make a song? Okay. Yeah. How, about, how, about we, how about we play some music and try and put our well, own we, twist on it? The problem is we can't play music because that's copyright issues. Right, right, True, right. but we, we can sing music. But you realize we we're play. also not making any money on this, so... No, but so, like, um, for those of you listening, like... So basically, if you play a song, like for example, like Life is a Highway was on one of our videos, YouTube, yeah, the YouTube algorithm caught it, and now if that if that video ever goes viral, Rascal Flatts will make Which money it off of it. No, won't, no one loves us. <laughs> we have six viewers, but like, if, if uh, that video ever goes viral, they'll make some royalties off of it. That's but fair. we can, no, so we can no, sing music, but we can't play music. All right, well, what song should we yeah. sing? We need to know a song, like the um, song that we all know together. I think nobody to wants sing. to hear us sing music. I think uh, I feel like I don't care what someone wants to hear. Yeah. All right, see you, folks. Um, How are you gonna get home if someone drove you here, faggot? Uh, okay, can I not use their vehicle? Just no. use their vehicle. I don't know. Your crap's all out of whack, no, and your shit's all fucked up, son. Illegal. It's illegal. All right, explain yourself. Uh, Warren, Warren Zevon, my shit's fucked up. What? Please tell me you know that song. Uh, Warren Zevon, my shit's fucked up. I don't know. You've never heard that? No, I was quoting. I was quoting myself. Oh, well, you quoted Warren Zevon by quoting yourself. All right, so, so everybody's you, out. You know, Dude, we just had like four people walk out the door. Yeah, I don't know where they're gonna go though because none of them can drive because they're all drunk. So that's thought, gonna go well. Didn't your Roman stay sober? I guess maybe. Welcome back to the Bears Brigade. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Michael Ryan, can you pick up one of those microphones? Sure. Good hey, job. what do we got here? What's I, I, I keep looking at your doggo. What breed is your doggo? Darwin's short hair. And he tried to eat me twice. Bro, he's a he's a pretty little pupper still. Yeah, but he, he's weird for some reason. How does it feel, Con? Being completely out to the point where like you literally just don't have to do anything. Feels pretty good, except for the fact I'm about to be a dad and ruin a child's life. <laughs> That's not going to go well. <laughs> yeah, oh, Con and Bailey are about to have a little girl. You have a little girl, man. About to have a little girl who's going to talk a lot of shit and beat up boys. Yeah, you know all those sound effects y'all are hearing? It's because I've had to cut a lot of shit out. Yeah, I'm sorry that uh, Alex has no filter, but I'm not. Well, I didn't one. have I didn't have anything to do what, on what's, Sunday, what's but gonna, now I do. What's gonna What's gonna be an issue is. Is if she continuously brings them home. As long as only one or two come home and she realizes it's a problem and she stops, there'll be no issue. But if she continuously brings them home, there's going to be a lot of deep holes in my backyard. Has it hit you yet, though? Like, has it really hit you that you're having a kid? No. Because for men, and I've told her this, yeah. for, for men, it doesn't hit them until the kid's in their arms. Like, the, the women... They understand and are ready and attached nine months before it happens. Yeah. For what's me... Your, what's your kid's name? We're still arguing about it. What's the argument? Was uh, it... I thought you guys said it on Ophelia, no? That's one of the top, but uh, it's still not decided. I you Have you ever started with opinion about it? Yes. Oh, wait, Bailey's chiming in. What's up? The fucking... He's picking the middle name. What's the middle name? Kyle? Oh, so like you pick the first name and then he's I, picking the middle name. I I wanted I wanted Kaylee from the show Firefly. Firefly. Yes. Well, Ophelia Kaylee would be kind of cute. I know, but I wanted it to be the first name, and she said no because Kaylee rhymes with her first name. What about it's Steve? not even spelled. It right. could be the middle name. Can like, you shut the fuck up? No one's naming their daughter Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an issue I have is I've met your mom and dad, and they're decent people, and then you're a moron. <laughs> And I want to know where I want to know where they went wrong because <laughs> yeah, where where did it get lost okay, in translation? Right, right. What, what about right me? Now. Because you've met my parents at this point, like to be. I've only hung out with your parents a minimal amount. Yeah, you, I've oh, stayed. Right. I've come to Levi's I've place. I've stayed. Right, yeah. I've stayed at his parents' house, and his mom and dad are super chill and regular. And That's then right. and then you meet. From what I've seen, your mom and dad are really regular. Where did I go off? 
Yeah, what happened? Where'd the... Not all the my off. come out well. Where are you off? Yeah, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. But You're just... Exactly. So nothing's wrong. I didn't fall far from the tree. Eat my ass. You're in a different orchard. Bailey, you can come orchard. get on the pine. I don't see yeah, an orchard. I'm talking a lot of shit. Bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna argue with you because you because I'm right. No, because you're yeah, I love I'm I love right. that like Bailey from the next room is just giving commentary in the background. <laughs> I give <laughs> talking up. Talking a bunch I'm, of shit. I, the fact that I don't have any cocaine right now is sad. <laughs> Bro, you have your hands full. You're about to have a, a baby girl. I know. That's why I want to <laughs> I want to do as much drugs as possible before the child's born because I know once she's born I can't do any drugs. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Her name's Ophelia. Her name is not Ophelia. Her name is decide undecided. I, Ophelia undecided. That's what we're deciding. That's actually a cute name. It's actually a really cute name. Ophelia is, is that Kaylee what Dine. we're deciding on? That's cute. Yeah. Loki think of failure. <coughs> Divorce. Hey, what? I that's will. A, hey, that's okay. That's not as weird as the names that I want to name. I guess. We're, so. I guess we're gonna have a divorce soon. No, I'm just kidding. Everyone got, got really super quiet. quiet. That got extra <laughs> awkward. I'm just joking. I love Nobody knew what to say. Jesus Christ. We're all just yeah, like, uh... That's the name of Jupiter. Wait, are you making fun of that IOP? That gives holy meaning to I drops just, of Jupiter. I don't understand why you're making fun of IOP. Gives me drops of Jupiter. Hey, hey, hey. <sighs> okay, I'm just checking that it's not because that's where I took that one bitch on a date to. Wait, what? Alright, never mind. Good night. Wait, did those fucks actually leave? Yeah, they took off. They went out the front door. Was one of them sober at least? Yes. Toasty! Fuck, my bad. Cut. Young yeah. Roman was sober. Did you say cut when you have to edit your own shit? Yeah, because I go, so I'll tell myself, cut, so that when you'll I leave can yourself, go back. You'll leave yourself little messages. Yes, yeah, so okay, when I can right. go through and listen, I'll be like, okay, boom. It's like right it's there. like when I when I let, when I watch YouTubers that play video games, they'll be like, okay, editor, cut to my screen. Yeah. It's like that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's fair enough. So you leave yourself little notes. If you know you're going to cut something out, you'll be like, like okay, like like we'll be talking, and then somebody will say something and be like, all right, stop. And then you'll pause for a bit and be like, all right, So cut. like, for example, Ready you, have, go. you have to leave Boom. yourself a note if I say... <laughs> cut. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, oh, basically how, how this works, the reason we're not live streaming right now is because, because I know better. I get us arrested. Because basically, like, when we go back and listen to this, I'm going to listen to the whole thing and I'm going to go like... Put a point here. The reason we're not, and a point li here reason and we're not live out. streaming is because freedom of speech is a myth. <laughs> well, freedom of speech is technically legal, but in the court of public opinion, things are different. Many terms of service of multiple platforms. Not exactly. if you just post it straight on the internet with no. I mean, I, I'm under no, I'm, I'm under no time. illusion that I'll that we will get financed by YouTube. I mean, even if even if we get a million subscribers. We're not going to get monetized. No, that's why we have to have, we have to find sponsors, and I feel yeah. like our sponsors should be Simply Safe because everyone else on YouTube that I watch is Simply Safe. That's right, and they have that's really right. fancy. Alex is sucking the dick of Simply Safe right now, well, sucking it nice and hard and deep. And this raw. is my first name, so have no, fun I'm editing just, that too. No. You're out of the military. It doesn't matter. I don't have my fucking last and first name on this bullshit. Okay, Alex? I guess Alexander okay. or Alex. But you used my last name too, cunt. Well, you're out of the military. Yeah. Yes, but and that still doesn't mean I want my last name on this bullshit. Okay, fine. I know I'm a piece of garbage. I don't want everyone else to know. Speaking Ooh, of trash boys. <laughs> hey, go on around. Go on around. It's I, okay. I, Send I, it. I'm married and have a wife. I'm talking about I'm I'm talking about our conversations. Which ones? You no, that's what's specific. beautiful. What's beautiful is okay. So so remember remember uh, when you came to hang out with me and my ex at the hotel when yes. you came to drink. Yes. And I, I told I remember I told her I was like I was like okay I guarantee he calls me trash boy in the first five minutes. Okay, so and I bet her I bet her. I bet her room service. Right? Let's let's get a and frame of reference. Hold on, like, hold on, let's let's back up. Let's back up. Okay, back up. Let's back, back up. up to a frame of reference of this. When he first went out with this girl, he asked me, "What do you think of her?" And I said, "Well, she's really good, except for her choice in men." <laughs> like I know I didn't explain that well, and I also said, "So this is a very decent, like, attractive girl, and she's his age." 
which is you're what 28 29 i'm 30 bro you're 30 already yeah jesus she's, she's fucking she's christ 27 almost 28 okay but 30. she's about your age yeah we're, what, we're, within, what, we're what i'm getting at years. this is yeah. what i'm getting at she's about your age and yeah, i'm like yeah, well yeah. she's I, I told rick i'm like yo she's really cool but she's too young for you and he looks at me and he goes she's my age and i'm like oh well you did too good for yourself. Have fun. <laughs> my, my issue wasn't that she wasn't a cool girl. My issue was I thought she was too young for him, but she was the same age. She was a mom and everything. And I was making fun of her the whole night for her mom jacket. And then I found out later she actually had a kid. Like, <laughs> well, I don't know if I should feel bad or feel extra smart for guessing. I remember when I, I made a bet. I was like, I guarantee he calls me trash boy. In five minutes. And it was two and a half minutes in. I made a comment. And you're like, listen here, trash boy. You literally said the words. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yep, I win. To be fair, <laughs> I wouldn't hang out with Rick or talk to him if I didn't think he was a trash boy. I don't like regular people. Regular people don't like me. I, I like the mild garbage humans. Well, that's definitely good. <laughs> and I get along with the mild garbage humans. Hey, Michael Ryan. Michael Ryan. Can you grab me a Michelob Ultra out of there, please? Can you make me some alcohol? You don't need any more. Just some type. No, you can have strawberries. Don't tell me what I can what, have. What, what you need is more okay. coffee. I've drank Ooh, coffee. And, and look, look, your wifey is behind you with cranberries. I don't fucking want crazy. Eat, eat the crazy. Mm -hmm. Take it, take it, drink it all. <laughs> She tried to put phrases in my mouth forcefully. My <laughs> No, you tried Get to... Get him off the floor for a dog to take you. Fuck you, the dog can't have phrases because... Oh, that was high. Oh, she's sleeping Send on the it. couch tonight. I pay rent. <sighs> That's right, you're unemployed now. <laughs> this, this podcast is gonna go downhill if you don't fucking shape up. Woman! This podcast has already been downhill. We're I in need the mud you to go. Right I, I don't want fucking cranberries. You either need to pick the bedroom or the couch. And I pay rent. Choose this. Divorce. That's it. Divorce. I'm going to drink a beer and I don't like beer. You know, Bailey, if you choke him to death from behind with like some root cord, I, I didn't see anything. I have so many guns. <laughs> You're lucky that I too drunk to flick that bottle cap at you. I better make it to trash. You better fuck off. Oh, I missed. I that one was a good flick too. Yeah, but you missed. I guess you're a whore. There's no sense. there's no where's the coasters on this table? Uh yeah. Yeah, where's the coasters? Are you talking into the beer? Where are my test Where are my test <laughs> <girls? laughs> Where have they gone? God damn it, I fucking hate you. Alright, talk to the mic. I'm gonna go take a piss. Get some beverages off my chair. Remember, remember that too? He's a spy, blow him up. I'm gonna go take a shit. <laughs> Someone bring me happiness. Stop touching me. No! Ow! Fuck! Stop! Stop touching me. No! Stop touching me. Hey, that woman is incubating your seed, son. Stop touching me! Jesus Christ! Move your feet. There's no cranberries on the rug. Where'd they go then? I Stand up. I swallowed them. Stand up. No. Stand up. No. I don't need a relationship for advice from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married. Fuck you. That's that's fair. I always say, don't take nutrition advice from an obese person. Don't take financial advice from a broke person. Don't take relationship don't take, advice from a married person. Is that where no, you're no, going? No, I know. I was going with me. I was saying, don't take relationship advice from a fucking garbage human. <laughs> Michael Ryan gave up and started playing Xbox. <laughs> in room. All my relationships ended in tears. <laughs> even even the last one that I thought was going really good ended in tears. So don't do it. I've had one long term relationship, and then I married her. Zero regrets. I love her, but she's mean. You just listen the first time I said shit. That's right. She's chiming in. She's like, just listen. I love her, but she's so right. mean to me. She's right. I give up. All I you gotta do is just submit. Submit to the iron. Submit to the iron fist of womanhood. There's three rings of marriage: the engagement ring, the wedding ring, and the suffering. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. 
this is this is Alexander signing off. I mean, all all I'm saying is that if Bailey wanted to kick your ass right now, I, I would just look the other way. Well, no, that's a lie. I would totally watch. I would run. I would, I would, I would, run. I would just run. And I, I may not have ran very much since I've been in the army, but I know I can outrun her pregnant. Ass. All I know is, all I know is, <laughs> all I know is that baby's gonna drop out and start kicking your ass, like, like. I like, can't, uh, I can't wait till I have a daughter and she fucking hates me. It's gonna be so sad because I'm gonna love her more than anything, and she's just gonna think I'm a piece of shit. Bro, you're gonna like that baby's gonna be born. That baby girl's gonna be born, and you're gonna hold that baby girl in your arms, and you're just gonna be like, you're gonna melt, and you're gonna cry and emote like. Oh, a, I know. Like a fa- you're I, gonna emote like a faggot. I know. I know that's gonna happen. But and then I know that she's gonna grow up, and she's gonna fucking hate me. And you know why would she hate you? Because that's what all teenage girls do. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, maybe when she's like thirteen to sixteen. All like, teenage girl. Yeah, from like fucking one to eleven. They love their dad. No, are you kidding me? Like, like a good dad who's in the picture? Like, girls are daddy's girls big time. It like, depends. I feel like my daughter, I feel like just by definition. Hey, your sister still lives with your parents. So what? My sister's a rare occurrence who's a decent human every, being. Every girl I've ever known that had, like, a decent father that was in their lives, they were all daddy's girls. Like, they... Love their fathers, like I they, hope so, because I'll fucking kill myself if my daughter hates me. No, it, bro, you're you're you ain't a. Pe- I mean, like we fuck with each other all the time. We joke on each other and talk shit on each but other. On but in a, the end, on a like base they, on a on, base level, we're decent people. On a on a real level, like you're not a piece of shit. Like you actually are a pretty good dude. I like, know you'll be there for your kid. Like you know your your daughter's gonna love you to death. Dude. Kids like, always hate their parents though. Like yeah, but okay. they outgrow that. They outgrow that because like, yeah, but every, once they become every adults, kid, every kid goes like, "Oh, my parents just don't understand." For example, because you think they don't understand, but then once you get older, you realize, like, "Oh, fuck!" Not only do they not, not only do they actually understand, but they went through the same shit. Yeah, but that's like a. And then you realize, like, "Oh, fuck!" My parents are actually really awesome people. It's a like, chunk of it's a chunk of six years, though. Like, yeah, I, I, I hated my parents for six years for no reason. And then I, I became an adult and realized that I was an asshole and everything was good and they were right about 90% of everything they said. But for those whole six years, I made them feel like pieces of shit for no reason. No, I remember and that like – always – yeah, that always well, happened. I remember like – I remember being like a kid and, and like my dad was deployed a lot and like I was mad because I was an only child and I, you know, goddamn it, mom, like you're so overbearing and blah, blah, blah. But then I realized like, oh – well, I am an only child, and I'm the only thing my mom has to worry about, and that's why she's so, like, over the top. It's because, like, I am literally, like, my dad's deployed. I'm literally all she has to worry about, you know? So it's like, you, you, so you realize once you get older, you're like, oh, okay, I get why they were acting the way but they did. Yes, I agree with what you're saying, but as a teenager, you don't. As a teenager, no. you're just an asshole. No, as a teenager, you're, as a, as a you're teen- just going to hate you when they're a teenager. That's what I'm saying. The reason that you were angry at your parents is because you went from the phase of being shit handed to you to having to work for shit, and you didn't want to go through that transition. That's not true, though. That's exactly what it is. No, it's not, because I worked from the age of fucking 14. But you wanted to make adult decisions instead of just getting money. And you didn't want to do that. So Bailey's talking right now. She, I don't want so to. I don't want right to talk now. to you right now because I just don't want to. Because you're drunk and I'm making sense. No, because <laughs> the, I can't. I can't intelligently rebuttal what you're saying because I'm drunk. Sure. It's not fair. Wow. It's it's like it's like a, a completely young 22 year old running. Bailey, ba- yeah, like I a, do. Bailey, you should really come and like grab a microphone. It's like a young 20. It's like a well, young bring, bring, bring 22 beer, year old. Beer. Okay, what my wife is saying right now is like a young Cause, cause 22 you're year old. Good advice. Like it'd be cool. Like come Rick, bring your computer. Rick, shut the, the fuck up for a second. <laughs> what my wife is saying right now is like a young 22 year old trying sense, to right? have a debate with fucking Trump or Biden, who are both senile. That's an accurate yeah. representation well, of what's going Well, think about it. Like, when you're a teenager, you think your parents don't understand. Exactly. and I, It's I, not until you get older, you realize, like, oh, fuck, not only do they understand, but yeah, they went through this. Before. And I understand. Like, like, and I, then, and then, but then karma catches up, and when you have a teenager, they're going to be like, you just don't get it. That's what I'm worried about. And you're going to be like, but I fucking do, because I was there. That's what I'm worried about. And I, I know, like, 
I, I know that's what it's going to be because when I was a teenager, I was a fucking terrible prick. And I know I was. <laughs> and I, yeah. I know I was. And I, but once I became an adult and realized the way I was, me and my parents are extremely close now. I call my mom almost every day and I call my dad every couple days. And I talk to him for at least fucking 30 minutes. Yeah, you get, to, you get to a point where like, but but uh, nobody once you, realizes. The, the older you get, the more you realize like, fuck, I love my parents and I miss them. But but, like, but there's that and whole. And you start to call them and be like, hey, I miss you. Like, what's up? But then there's that <laughs> entire there's that entire eight to nine year section. Yep. Where your kids hate you and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. And I know. It's and, a rebellious it, phase, it's bro. Just, it's not even. It's just so fucked. No matter what you do, for eight to nine years or six to seven, depending on the kid. You, they hate you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And no. they don't realize that the kid was an asshole until later. Unless you're me and you never go back to your parents. Bailey, grab it's not your Bailey, fault. Bailey, grab a microphone. You, you're, you're the outlier. You're, here. you're the outlier, though. I don't know how this works. It's switched on. So you just, just stalk into the microphone. Most Bailey has joined us. Bailey is, is, uh, is Alex's Alex. wife, <clears throat> and she is currently incubating... My it, child. Yeah, she is currently she's currently growing human life. I'm, of I'm her. 22 years old, about to be 23, and I'm about to be a fucking dad of a daughter. Yeah, and all I know is it's super exciting. All though. I know is Not super crazy. All I know is I've got a lot of guns, and whenever she starts dating, there's going to be a lot of holes in the backyard. But hey, no. but that but that little girl that yeah. little girl has a lot of very protective uncles too. Oh yeah. So one thing, as much as I fucking despise the military, I love the guys I've met and become close with in my in my platoon slash career. They, they, I know they've always got my back no matter what I need to do. I know if I need to fucking bury a body somewhere in the desert. <laughs> slight example or an extreme example, I would say. Oh, yeah. We, we go like we go like like twenty years down the road when when a body needs to be buried. Because what, you call like, them, guess you, what? You, you call us. When and where? When and where? Order. How are we disposing? And they've got. <laughs> yeah. Which yep. that's, that's the right. only reason besides that I've met my wife in the military. The only reason I don't regret joining because boy did I fucking hate every minute of it. Besides the people I've met and the fact that I've married my wife. You hated it, but you learned some sort of responsibility. I, true, yes. What's well, like you said? That, that's why you don't regret it. It's like no, the, I don't. Like, I don't regret like, it. The I military, don't like like the military, was not for you. No, and that's and that's okay. That's and totally fine. The military, but you don't regret it because you learned that. I've you I've sure. had I've had NCOs, which is non commissioned officer and leadership. Basically, I've had them say he's too smart to be in the military, but he would have made a great he would have made a great NCO. I've had people tell me and other people that I know that about me. No, you you would have been a good answer. Oh, I know. You'd but, be fucking awesome. But the issue is, I won't fucking play the game. Yeah. And to oh, no, be, I understand. And that the whole, you, the, yeah, the whole the whole uh, paradox with the military is to be a good NCO, you have to play the game. But yep. if you yep. play the game, you're automatically a fucking shithead. No, that's what that's the thing. So like recently, I won't get into it because certain people might listen to this someday. Like while I'm still in, no one's gonna listen to this. <laughs> like, yeah, no shit. But um, so like playing the game, right? So like, which which uh, when we when we say playing the game, play, playing the game is uh politically bettering your career in the Fucking military. Fucking kissing ass, which that and all it means throwing people under the bus. That's all it means. Exactly what Rick just said. I think I would have rather played your game instead of the female side. Pla- playing the game. Basically, well, sh- just means is a whole other game. Oh, kiss yeah, ass, the female side, kiss like, ass, and tell people what they want to hear. That's up to you if you want to get into that. To become uh, it, it's, a higher it's so, rank in the military, so fucked up. Like on our side, it's like you know you get pulled into an office, especially when you're an older dude like myself and another dude who's in our platoon who I won't name. It's up so to so when we you, got we got pulled into an office, and basically in a nutshell, they wanted us to throw. Good people under the bus. Well, t- t- and we're just like, like give him a baseline. We- give him baseline. When he says an older dude, he means when you join the military and you become a private, you're nine times out of ten, 19, 20 years old. Rick, Rick joined the military late, and he was twenty eight. Yeah, I joined at twenty seven. You, you, he joined at twenty eight. 
or 27. Yeah. So he, no, like, hard. right now you're what, a PFC? I'm 30. I'm 30 now. No, I'm a specialist now. You're a specialist now? Yeah. Okay. I got so, waved. I got waved. Yeah, you I'm did. You did. Now. So yeah. he's 30 years old and a specialist. With nine times out of 10, when you're in the military and you're 30 years old, you're a staff sergeant or above. Yeah. If you join at 19. Basically, I'm, I am four years older than my platoon sergeant. And um, nine times out of ten, my platoon sergeant is twenty six. He's like, o- he's older than everyone who outranks like, him. It's like listen, he he knows way more about military shit for sure, but he doesn't know more about life shit. And so they they pull people like myself and another individual in our platoon. They pull us in. They try to get us to throw people under the bus, and we're old enough to be like, uh, no, we're not doing that because that dude's a good dude. And like, we- when We're you, not going to play that fucking game. When you join, and they get mad about that because they're like they want to advance their career. When so, you join, when you join as a young adult, 19, 20, 21, when you join at that point, you don't know anything about military, and you also don't know anything about life. But if you're an intelligent person, you quickly learn things about military, and you quickly learn things well, about especially, life. Especially when, like, so for example, like myself and the other dude I'm talking about, Levi, like. We didn't join the military because it was a last resort. We you joined, t- we joined you, the military because we wanted to be two, in the military. But you two are outliers. Like, yeah. Like, you two aren't the norm. Yeah, we like, didn't we didn't you, join the military because it was a last resort. We joined the military because that's what we wanted to do. So, to be fair, they joined the military because they didn't understand like I, what I, serving their country well, and we joining the military a huge, was. Both of us took a huge pay cut. Like, both, both of us were making, like... 70 80k a year and, and in a cor- trade job correct me if i'm wrong <laughs> and we we took the pay cut to join the military correct me if i'm wrong you two joined because you wanted to serve your country yeah but you also neither one of you realized what that meant you didn't re- yeah. you didn't realize you're going to become glorified janitors and be fucking fully useless yeah and i'm not saying to your character i'm saying to what what you guys your, what your skills are put towards yeah, it exactly. doesn't. It doesn't matter if you're intelligent. It doesn't matter if you know what you're doing. When you join the military, if you start at the base level, which ninety percent of the time you start at the base level, you don't do anything of value, and, and that breaks people down. Especially if, especially if they've already known what life is like, and then they join. Like to me, I, I didn't. I didn't like have a civilian life before I joined. I sort of did, but not quite. But these two guys, they're both in their late twenty, late twenties, about to be thirties, and they had a life before. And then they joined, and they became janitors and fucking people that just did the lowest job on the totem pole. Yeah, I mean, basically, we went from being skilled tradesmen making eighty k a year to now we're basically janitors, and it's like, oh well, fuck. And, <laughs> and they get to, they get told we're in the military not because we had to. We had good like. Both me and the other dude, we had we had good jobs before. We were making good living, but we felt that we wanted to do something more. But so then, they, the then they joined, and they realized they're getting told what to do by people four, five, six years below their age who don't know shit. About Which, to be anything. fair, like there, there's a few, there's a few like um, I, I can't say his name, but there's a few NCOs that we had that are gone now, and a couple that are still here, who are. Younger than us, and they're awesome. But that's not the but norm. That's the, not norm the norm is the norm is that, <clears throat> as as like a thirty year old dude, the norm is that you're getting power tripped by dudes who are like five years younger than you. It's and, it's, it's and you're not like, a hey, I get experience. it. You know, you know more about the military life, maybe, but you don't know more about life in general. And it's like you get power tripped by them, and you're just sitting there thinking, like, yo, like. You're not intimidating me right now. I will like, never. I know. I know. Never, you're a kind of person. I will like, never, never advocate to join the military, because yes, <laughs> the only benefit you get from joining the military, in my opinion, is the brotherhood and the the connections and the friends you make at your own level. But the leadership, like it's, it just doesn't. It they they don't look out for you as much as they say they do. They don't. And it's just not okay. No, and that's why most higher ranking, the reason they suck so bad is because the good ones get out because they get burned out. They're like, I'm done with this shit. I've literally had a sergeant 
That's the reason why, like, the reason you're getting out is like you you would make a great NCO, but, uh, but you're I, getting the fuck out because for example, you're like, fuck this one, shit. One of our sergeants, which I bet you know which one I'm talking about, has said to some of our peers, he would make a great NCO, but he's too smart to play the game. Yeah, and that's like that's super fucked up the way this shit works. Well, that's the reason, like, the reason my dad. After 23 but years, it was, got it, out it as was, an E5. It was different back then. My dad got out as an E5 after 23 years for that reason. It was. It was. He wouldn't play the game. It was better and worse back then. Yeah, if that makes sense. Well, it was better in the fact that, like, in our MOS, he well, got to go. Okay, he, had to, so, he had to go actually fight bad guys. So where where can we say but, what our MOS is? Yeah. That's okay, right. so we're Romeos, which is uh, one in, three Romeos. It's in field, it's in field or, uh, field artillery, and basically where we track enemy rounds, and we send up the location where the rounds came from for our guns. Which when we say guns, we mean artillery. Like basically, when bad water, guys when bad guys shoot at us, we track where they shot from and, and tell our people back. where to shoot at. Yes, that that's what our job is, and what our job used to be. Before I got in, before Rick got in, back when Rick's dad was in, what the job was is you go out in uh, Kuwait, Afghanistan, shit like that. Fucking Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, like all that shit. They go out in the shit. You purposefully get shot at so that you could track. They they track shit. where the artillery is coming from out in the shit, and then they tell the people who need to know where it is, and then they shoot their artillery back at them. Nowadays, our job is we sweep the line, which means sweep the dust out of the fucking concrete in the desert. Every single day, the wind blows, blows the sand back onto where the vehicles are, and we're just glorified fucking janitors. We don't do anything of value, nothing. Even when we went on our deployment, which there were some air quotes there, I know you can't fucking see. Air quote, quote, deployment. Which is... A technically rotation. When we went to Korea, we also swept the line, but instead of sand, it was leaves and snow. We did nothing. Like I, the the way the military makes you feel is just pointless. Like you feel like you have no purpose. Yeah, like the the biggest like downfall of of this MOS is that like. More than half of us want to actually see combat and go and do the job. But the problem is, is that we don't. So we end up just being janitors. And it fucking hurts because all of us want to do our jobs, but we don't get to do our jobs. No, okay, it's different. Talk about what you want to better background commentary. Okay, so my, my wife's going to chime in now. And uh, Bailey, please chime in. This is Bailey. And... This is also one of the only reasons I don't hate the military is because yeah. I met my wife there. No, actually, I, I will say this. I will say this. So when I first got to Korea, and I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody, and I was kind of... You remember, like, I only opened up, like, after a week in Korea. So, to be was, fair, Because I didn't, like, Rick, how, I was getting to feel Rick, everybody. to be fair, though, like, the way I made the platoon be... And I, I had a... But by the time we got to the platoon, I had a handle on, like... Leading most of them. Yeah. Which, I don't know if I'm explaining why, but the way I wanted the platoon to be and the way I always was is yeah. when someone new comes, you give them the benefit of the doubt, you bring them into the fold, and if they suck, you kick them out. Yeah. If they don't suck, like you didn't, you bring them in and you yeah. fucking make sure they join in. Well, something, something I always love about you, Bailey, was the fact that like when I first got there... She was one of the first people to, like, talk to me and hang out. Like, so when we did, like, table fives and shit, like, I remember I remember thinking, like, I was like, oh, she must just be very outgoing and, like, she must She's talk to her. not. Her. But you're not. All. You're not at all. But, like, for some reason, like, me and you got along really well from the get-go. And, like, me and you talked a lot when I first got there. I was like, oh, she's cool as fuck. So, like, you made me feel very welcome. Like, I was like, oh, dude, these people are fucking cool. Hell yeah. Which, that's and I came to find out, like, oh, she's not she's not outgoing at all. I we found, just got along really well. I found two know? fucking cranberries in my crotch. <laughs> Stop! No, you yeah, did so, that. So basically, Bailey is the reason that I felt comfortable when I first got there. Because 
I knew, obviously, I knew that y'all were like seeing each other from the beginning. To be fair, when you first got there, uh, Harris, I knew. Harris I knew. ruined it. I knew. Harris, Harris made Harris made it to where like I fucking hated you because the second which I, I did, yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh god, damn. I was, it was so awkward. But like basically, like the the our first like actual field, not even a field thing, but it was table five when we had to do the setups and shit. Sleeping outside when I was sitting. When I was like, when, when we were doing the emplacement drills and stuff, I was just like, she was the only one I knew at that point. And like, you were actually really nice and like explaining shit and like talking to me and stuff. And I was like, okay, that- this girl's chill. She's cool. She's cool as fuck. Like, and I just remember thinking like, I know that, I, I know that her and Alex have a thing. But I'm, I'm like, I'm wondering like, what's going on with the platoon, you know? But then, so I felt an unease in the platoon. Well, it turns out that the platoon sergeant at the time was causing some problems. You, you came, Rick. You came into the platoon at an unopportune time. Yeah, I was. I was like the, feeling the best. I was feeling the, weirdness, and I was feeling like there's some weird shit going on right now. You came I, in at like the middle of the season finale. The best way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the best. The way, exactly. That was a pretty I good walking, way to put so, like, I remember, like, I'm not going to name names, but the platoon sergeant at the time, I remember just thinking, like, I don't like this guy. He creased me out. He's weird. And, and there's some a girl. And there's some shit going on. I and, think we should and name names. I didn't even see anything go. No, we can't, because I'm still in the army. Yes, I know, faggot. I know. So, basically, like, I remember walking in, and, like, I'm pretty good at, like, judging when things are weird. And I remember just walking in and be like, okay, she seems cool. Homeboy seems cool. These people seem cool, but there's something weird going on. I don't get it, but there's something weird going on. There's some weird tension going Bad on. Vibes. There it, was. Turns, it turns out that the platoon sergeant at the time was a creepy motherfucker who was like creeping on our homegirl. Which and it's not even just you, it's not even just her either. either. Yeah, so, and she was the only girl in the platoon, and like and but, but and not just make, not you, just was he being creepy, but he's being aggressively creepy. You've got to make it. Out, you've got to make it clear. You've got to make it sure that it's not just as directed as it's sounding right now. Like my wife was in the platoon, but the platoon sergeant was not just directing his creepiness at my wife, who at the time wasn't. But you had a vagina. Anyone in our battery, which a battery consists of usually five platoons. And e- each platoon had about six or seven females in it at a time. No, no, it was not just the battery. It was every female within the battalion or anyone yeah. could get near. I, was it the battalion, though? Yes, yeah, so the investigation ended, and we got the numbers for how many females he was going after. It was literally every single one he could find. I didn't realize it reached to the battalion. But my point that I was trying to make is it was every, it was every female that he had contact with. He would, And he's married with a kid. And he's two still, kids. he's, oh, he has two? He adopted one from some family member. Okay, I didn't know that. But he basically was trying to have sexual interactions with every female that he worked with. And now this motherfucker, this motherfucker, like, when it came out, it was like, oh, he was creeping on, like, 20 different fucking chicks. Like, this dude who's married with kids was trying to have sex with, like, Basically every girl, every cute girl in the battalion, like. And it was because, and I quote, lonely and needed female companionship. Yeah, because that excuses everything, I guess. I don't know. He tried to use my PTSD diagnosis, because I got diagnosed while we were over there, as an excuse for me to go over to his room and spend quality time together. Yeah, this dude's a fucking creep, and... Like I said, we're not going to name names because we're not allowed to, like, those of us that are still in. But in the end, it's like, even even myself, that, that's how strong it was, is that even myself, new to the platoon, I, I felt that something was weird. Something was off. And I was like, ah, something's different here. Something's weird. Like, and it turns out it was. Because once, like, it didn't take long for, like, me and you and... Alex and all of us to become friends it became one of those things of like then you guys were telling me the story and I was like oh that's what it is like oh no <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> well, luckily he got demoted. And Sorry. Moved. <laughs> That's like. I mean, he should have been two of discipline. I mean, he should have. He should have been. Should have been. He should have been kicked out, really. But at least he got demoted and moved, at the very least, you know? At the very least. Well, do you least. remember whenever the investigation stuff started, they're like, oh, yeah, we have enough evidence because we all had text and call logs and stuff, like solid proof of how bad he was being. And That's the worst part is with, like, especially with um, that chick that's at Fort uh, Hood. Gullian? 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 I don't know how, I don't know how to pronounce. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but that poor girl that went missing... It's funny, at first she just went missing, and then now you see all these reports coming out of her being harassed. Only now is it considered a yeah. play. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, there you go. That's why. Because she's a very cute girl who got harassed by probably a bunch of NCOs, and then she got disappeared. And it's like, and then I remember you, you posted something about it, and I was like, well, that makes sense. Because she got disappeared because she was actually trying to report that shit, you know? The, the shit that happened with my wife got pushed under the rug, and still is pushed Multiple under the rug. Times. Yeah, I'm gonna say this right now, and I don't. And, and this is one of those things where I don't care about the repercussions of it. Like the army can come after me all they want on this one. The idea that women can get harassed in the military and get get sexually assaulted and harassed, and then it just gets pushed under the rug. Is fucking bullshit. There's like, lots of dirt under that rug. She was there's, even told. There's there there is no Rick, way Rick, like like I, like I get it like modern society. There's a lot of people that are crying wolf, but when it comes to real situations of sexual assault and sexual harassment, like there are so many situations where like women are sexually harassed. And then nothing, nothing happens. Before, like they report it, and then those, right. and the people that report it get fucking get they get fucked. Before I lose, before I lose my train of thought. Yeah, yeah, go for it. My, my wife literally reported everything that happened. And yeah. Every time they talked to her, like the higher ups, the people that outranked her and were in charge of shit, every time they talked to her, they were like, "Okay, this and this is gonna happen. He's gonna be punished. This and this." Every time she talked to him. From the point of the beginning to the point of four or five times she talked to him down the line, it just became less and less severe. She talked to him the first time, he's going to be kicked out, this and this. Second time, he's going to be dropped a rank and not going to be allowed to be around anyone who's important. And then the third time, he's going to be dropped a rank but be able to get his rank back within a year. And then the last time they talked to her, they basically told her, that he's going to be moved to a unit next door to the unit she works at, and he's going to be able to get his rank back within a year. Like, at first it started off, they wanted to make her think that everything was going to be good, and he was going to be fully punished and be out of the army. Well, what's, and, what's and super crazy is, so you weren't there for this, like, um, I don't know if you were there for, I don't know, you weren't there, like, uh, the other day when they were talking about him. It was, uh, it was... Oh, yeah, he told me about that. So our platoon sergeant and uh, a, f- a couple other, like, two other, e- two E5s who we, we love dearly who are still in our unit right now. For now. For now. They're getting the, out. The, the one's ones PCSing, we... one's ETSing. But, like, one thing... So our, our platoon sergeant can be a mighty, a mighty strong penis. However... He does have his moments of being a good guy. And one thing that he is a good guy about is that. And he said, like, he goes, he, he made a comment, he's like, yo, he goes, you know that motherfucker, like, petitioned to come back into this unit? With, petitioned with who? Well, he was trying to come back to our unit. Who, who, was he, like, talking to his chain of command about it? Or was he yeah, just he, asking, like... He was trying to come back to our radar unit. And, like, I, I heard that, but I didn't get any like details. And our, like, platoon, and sar- our platoon sergeant, basic, our our platoon sergeant right now, basically said, "Fuck no, like keep him the fuck out of here." Like he was like, "No, absolutely not." Wasn't his reasoning because he wanted to go to the next Korea thing? I don't know what the reasoning was, but I know that our platoon sergeant right now, he was like, "No, no, he's not coming back into our unit." He, he, he's not okay with as that. As much as our platoon sergeant, well, my ex platoon sergeant, because I'm out, as much as he's a fucking asshole and just, just a dick for no reason, 
he 90% of the time does look out for us. Well, when it comes to that kind of stuff, well, he doesn't suffer that kind of well, shit. In, in, he's like, when it comes to that kind of stuff, he's like, he, he does not tolerate it. That. Like, Are we forgetting six months ago when he purposely threw us all under the bus? Okay, just to help someone else. To be fair, yes, I'm well, not, well, I'm when not he, saying I'm I mean, not yeah. saying he's not a fucking piece of shit. I know he's a dick because, like, remember when he pulled me in the office and he tried to get me to throw people under the bus? Yeah, yeah like, but I'm not. I'm not saying he's he's, he's he's a pol- he's a political game playing motherfucker. Which I'm not saying but he's not. When it comes he to is a fucking asshole. When it comes to that he, kind of stuff, he does, he does not. He does play that game. look out for his platoon in a way. Yeah, I'm not saying he does it the right way. When it comes to gross shit like that, he's he does not play that game. And it's kind of funny because, like he said, like he was talking to the, you know, the two D fives I'm talking about. He, yeah, he's not a yeah. full. He's, he's not, not a full. Like, he's like, hey, did you hear so and so? Did you hear so and so is trying to come back into the fucking platoon? Which I didn't. I didn't. Know, I didn't know about this. No, that, he's not coming back that, here. That's and that's that's one of those moments where I'm like, you know, what? I don't like you, but I appreciate. Which that. is the same. It's the same type of thing. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, baby. Send it. At the same damn time, hurt my head. <laughs> the only reason, so he was, I reported that one guy twice, officially. Yeah. And the first time I did it was when I first got there, and he started doing all that shit. Um, and it like immediately got swept into the Creepy rug. Fucking bastard. <sighs> and the only reason that they got away with sweeping it under the rug so easily was because of the chief at the time, because they were. Like, hello, buddy, buddy. And the only reason that didn't happen again for this, uh, the second time was because he wasn't there to, like, take charge of the situation. Because the first time it happened, um, they claimed that they gave him a serious talking to about professionalism and that he should only talk to me in a professional we're manner. Him a, we're giving him a strong talking to. Ugh. That lasted, like, a week, and then we went to Korea, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to like that I'm like a bitch don't fucking do it again but what happened like three days later he did it again that's what's weird it's like like I get it like you you get people like I'm not gonna name names because we can't on the podcast but like we all know certain individual females who use that to their advantage and like try to say like oh I'm gonna say that you did this like so I get that but like when there's a established when there's an established like pattern yeah it's like okay after like three or four like fucking complaints there's obviously a problem here. there were dozens of this last like actual investigation because yeah. they actually brought it to an investigation once mentioned once once you so like um and if you don't want me to say this then just you know wave me I don't care. Well, you but like it down. But, like, yeah, I'll cut it out. But, like, I remember when he first came, when he came back again, once we got back to Bliss, and you had a panic attack when we went on a run, and you fell out of the run, and, like, our platoon sergeant went off with you to talk to you and went on the he run. He thought I was just, like, out of shape, and Which, I started yeah. crying, and he so, was like, what so the hell? So, once we were running back, you're sitting on the curb with him, and, and I could see y'all are talking, and I was, and that was his moment of, like, like, he was asking me, like, what's up? And that's when that shit all started. Which I, I was with I was with my wife for almost an entire year before I married her. And I knew everything that was going on with our platoon sergeant and the guy who was harassing her, which was the platoon sergeant. But I, and I knew it was bad and she was uncomfortable. We could just refer to him as the predator. Uh, okay. We can, all right. The predator will work. But uh, my, the point I was trying to make is... I didn't understand how bad it was for her until we got back to America and sh- we started going back to work. Because one, once you get back from a de- oh, excuse me, once you get back from a deployment, you get a month of leave to just go visit your family, do whatever you want for a month. When we got back from that month, she went to work and went into PT for the day. And then she saw him, and it was just literally just hearing okay, his... So, it wasn't right after we... He was gone for about three months after we got back. Sure, and I, I got used to him being gone, I, and I was relieved. I know, but I'm and saying... And no one told me when he was coming back. I'm saying the day that he got back, and you didn't know, and we got to work, and 
you heard his voice and you just broke down. I never even saw him. And I didn't understand that it was that bad for her. Like, I knew it was fucked up and the way he was treating her. And I, I knew that was going on. I didn't know it was that emotionally devastating to her that she, she heard his voice and had a panic attack. And I didn't understand that it was that bad until that day happened. And it, it did, and they called her in to the first sergeant's office and asked her why she freaked out, and she told her, and then everything kicked off with the report and stuff like that. And everything was okay, and they were like, we're going to punish him, blah, blah, blah. And then, as like I said earlier, as it went on, it got less and less severe, and he just got less and less punishment. No, I, I, remember, I remember like that day like it was yesterday, just because there's a difference between like, like every dude in the military that's single is like trying to get some. Right? We're, we're all, okay. We're all a bunch of dogs. God, like, guys in general are perverts. Yeah. And then you get military guys and you're we're, all perverts. We're a bunch of, we're, we're a bunch of fuck boys. But really. then, then there's, but there's another there's, level. But like, yeah, there's that different level of, of like, predatory you, you can be You can be a guy who's wanting to find some Which, strange. generally speaking, even in military dudes, like a decent dude in the military, you know he the can't difference stand between that, right and wrong. that predatory behavior is creepy. It's like, the you're same just thing. like, ooh, same, I don't like that. It's, like, the same I, thing I, how, it's the same thing how uh, uh, pedophiles in prison get fucking stabbed and killed. Yeah. It's a, it, like, for murderers and Armed robbers and shit like that in prison. All I know is that if the one, day, if that people, day, hold, that, hold on, hold on. Oh, right, if, in, in prison, if murderers and like gang members and shit like that, like hard criminals who don't give a shit about killing people, if they find out you're a pedophile in prison, they'll kill you. You're dead. It's the yeah. same type of thing in prison, or it's yeah. the same type of thing in the military. Like, all military guys are a little bit perverted. Yeah, we'll fuck dirty bitches all day. But if life. you find out the second that, is like an actual... Is key. Yeah, if exactly. Out the second we find predator, out that some dude is, a, is pr- like, like, like stalking some chick and you, being a predator, it's like, oh, you that. fucking bitch. Like, you don't. Oh, it's the you. same like, type of deal you. in prison. And as much as I... I don't know. I honestly kind of like the comparison to military and prison. Just because the way it is. Well, it makes sense. It does. <laughs> yeah, and you're not going to understand unless you were in the military. All I know is, like I said. Well, no, because even people in prison aren't going to understand the That day, the that day, so like I understood the situation before then, but that day is what made me like, as I'm running, I'm just like, this is some serious shit. Like, and, and what's worse. And then, and then after that is when all the shit went down. And I was like, this dude deserves, he needs to be kicked the fuck out. What's, he needs worse, to the fuck is, out. what's like, worse is, like, take aside all the, the male predators in the military. Just put them aside. They don't matter at this point. The, the older women in the military are, like, not supportive and, oh, fuck, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, the, the way the one sergeant I'm talking about, I know you know, know what I'm talking about. Oh, our, the way our she treated the way she treated you at different you're, sessions. You're talking, about our, you're talking about our overlord. Uh, I'll, I'll say the uh, island Nazi. Oh Jesus! You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. So 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 women in the military. Yeah. Women well, she in the was military, she was particularly mean to you, and, which, and, and, but which, she was never mean to men, which is super which, weird. For it's me, like, for me, why I, are you so mean? This, this like, particular stop. this particular individual I'm talking about. Hold on, I'm gonna lose my train of thought. Your train is really long. This particular individual <laughs> I'm talking about, I've never had a problem with. I enjoy talking to her. She's fucking feisty and cool as shit, in my opinion. But my wife, every experience she's had with her, she's been disrespectful, mean, unsupportive, just straight up putting her down. And th- to me, women in the military should stick together and look out for each other. But that's not the way it is. Yeah, they should. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. All right, go, Bailey, go, ahead, go, Bailey. go ahead. I'm sorry. First, so I'll, cut, I'll cut that out. Bailey, go ahead. First of all. Well, you don't have to cut that out now. That's not our last thing. Jesus Christ. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. First of all, the whole her being mean and whatnot, the first time that happened was she literally tried to throw hands with me. I know. And the only reason I yeah, know, you're not I even shit. talking into the microphone. I, I know what you're talking about. And our one of our favorite NCOs stepped in the way and took care of what needed to be taken care of. No, but that's what, like, started her whole bullshit. And I was like, okay, well, 
I don't care what you guys need me to like get from her or do or say to her. I'm not going in her office by myself. Someone needs to go with me because of how like just nasty her attitude. Which is, is I, I hundred percent agree with, and I'm not being saying this to be disrespectful. You've never worked. I don't know how to say this without being super terrible. Okay, so wait, <laughs> listen. She thinks that. You guys can all banter with each other and talk like you're like buddy buddy, even if you're different ranks and all that. But if I do it to someone who's a different rank than me, or even the same rank, it's wrong. I have to be professional at all times. There's a stigmatism. I know what you're saying. She she does that shit where she thinks that um, women nowadays do nothing but sit on their ass and get everything handed to them, and that back in her day, only because, she ran circles around the guy. Only because that's what she does now. She doesn't fucking work. She doesn't do shit and she needs to get kicked out. I, I don't know. I, she can't even take a PT test. I'm just, I, I'm I'm not glad, or I'm, I'm not, I'm not disappointed I joined the military because I've met friends for life and I've met my wife that I love more than anything. But other than the people I've met of my own rank and the like peer group, the military was a horrible fucking experience. Horrible. I'll never recommend to recommend it to anyone. If someone's thinking about joining the military, I will hundred percent say go to fucking school. It's literally It's the, horrible. It's the opposite of productive. Like There's no, it, nobody you can't get fired for being terrible. You get how hard can you, we make you get this moved game? elsewhere it, and oh, then you rank up. All I've gotta say is if you're thinking about joining the military, fucking look at a hard look look in the mirror hard and go to fucking school. Yeah.